I am putting in the first wash on the base of the baseball. I am using a combination of Gamboge Nova and Scarlet Lake to get this nice transparent peach color. There are some single tube colors that come out just like this. However, they're not transparent, they're very opaque. So I like mixing the two colors instead of working with that opaque color, especially on a project like this, where I'm gonna do many layers of color over each other. I try to stay away from opaque colors so that my washes don't end up looking dirty and muddy by the end. So especially with a beginning wash, I try to keep in mind what's transparent and opaque. And I've darkened the wash a little bit with some shadow green. The main thing you want to keep in mind is that it is a three-dimensional object. So you want to make sure that your shading and shadows are on the right part of it. So in this painting, the light is coming from the top left. So I want to make sure all of my highlights and everything like that are coming from that right spot from this top left area coming down so that even in my initial layers I'm making sure that my ball is going to stay looking round. Now these are some old beat up baseballs so I don't have to be as concerned with how uh, uneven the wash is because in the end I am going to weather them on purpose so that makes it a lot easier to not have to worry too much about a perfectly light even wash I would be doing it a lot more careful if I had to make sure that it was a perfectly even wash putting some of that color up in the corner. Again, these are super old baseballs. A little too much red in there. These are super old baseballs, so they have a lot of the clay on them. So a lot of that kind of pinky clay color is on them. And also quite a few grass stains on other ones. So a lot of that will go in later. But in the initial wash, I just want to make sure all that color is in there. Make sure I leave the spots light I'm not using any masking on this painting, so I'm making sure I'm just doing one spot at a time and going through and leaving my highlights white in the beginning, or not quite white, but pretty white, so that I don't have to go back and I didn't want to have to mask. Okay, so I've got that initial wash in. I'm starting to get the feel that the shadow is down here, but there'll be many future washes that will get that darker. Here I'm starting to put the next layers onto the baseball, darkening up the bottom so it really gets that round feel. The baseballs that I'm doing in this painting are definitely more beat up, which of course, if it's something super smooth, it's a lot harder to blend the edges. But because the balls are super beat up, and in the end I'm just going to add a whole bunch of texture to them and dry brush techniques and stuff like that, it of course makes it a lot easier when you're adding this extra shade on the bottom, the shadows, because I'm purposely making it rough as I go. And I don't have to worry quite as much about the edges because I'm really going to rough them up later. So that makes this step a lot easier than it would if I was painting something super smooth and I had to have this nice even wash. Um, so that makes this part of this a lot easier. You want to make sure that your pencil lines are dark enough so that once you're done with all of this you can still see where your lines for the laces are. The laces will also be shadowed, so, and the red will just go right over top 
this shadow color that I'm adding now. So it'll be really easy to do all that in a later step. I didn't have to mask all those laces off in order to add the red later. So I'm just adding layers of slightly different browns and blending them up. So eventually this ball will just look nice and round. I have most of my shading on and now I'm just going to start putting in my laces. This is going to be a multi-step process. The first wash I am putting in is Scarlet Lake mixed with Perline Maroon. Both are Holbein watercolors. Uh, everything in this painting is a Holbein watercolor. And I'm just putting a light wash of these two colors and then I'll go back and darken up the edges with Perline Maroon and also a mixture of the black that I have been using for the entire painting and Perline Maroon. And that black mixture is Shadow Green mixed with Quinacridone Red. If you've seen the videos of the cherries I have painted, Quinacridone Red is my new color that I've recently tried and I love. It is a bright, vibrant color and mixes so well with others and makes a beautiful black that you can easily lighten and darken with other colors. So instead of using that straight black, I've been mixing it with some red and some yellow to temper it down to a brown. And it's that perfect tone. I like mixing a black much better than a tube black. But I'll start by just putting in this basic wash. And then where some of it's a little bit darker, I'll come back with some straight Perline Maroon. And put in some darker areas on the laces. You want to make sure in the end they have that nice 3D effect. You want to keep in mind your light is coming from this direction. So when you're putting those shadows in, in just the darker areas, you want to make sure it's all consistent from where your light is coming from. So this will definitely be a multi-stage process that I'm just going to keep moving along for each one of these base balls. And again, this is a 29 and a half by 41 inch piece of Arches Cold Pressed 300 pound paper. So this is the first time I have used this huge piece of paper. I do many full sheet paintings, but this is actually an oversized piece of paper that if you've seen any of the photos I've posted, they barely fit on my desk. I have a five foot desk. Apparently if I'm gonna keep painting at this size, I might need to get it a little bit bigger. But I just slowly go and put the laces in one at a time. And then as it dries, come back and add some of the detail and definition as I go in. And just keep going. I have all of the laces in where they go at this point. So now I am just adding some of that pearly maroon. to put some detail on them. This will take quite a few coats and levels of detail that I'm adding in order to get it exactly how I want it. But a lot of it's just going slow, making sure I remember where the light in my painting is coming from. I'm gonna add more darks to my actual baseball to give it more of the feeling of the curve. So right now I'm adding the detail into the laces, but I will add still be adding a lot more to the baseball itself to really get that feeling 
that it's rounded and that where the seams are stick up a little bit. And of course this process is basically the same for all of the baseballs. Some have more light or less light on them. But it's just adding layers of color to get all that detail in as I go. And I'll weather some of them more to make sure that some of them look pretty scruffed up in this. So I want to make sure that comes across. But it's just putting in the details. And again, this is the Perline Maroon Holbein watercolor that I'm using for this. And a lot of you asked about my brushes. I use the Holbein Gold brushes as well. I really like them. They're not expensive. They work great. A great combination. And this painting is on Arches 300 pound cold press paper. It is the large size paper. So it is 29 and a half by 41, which is the first time I've done it this size. And of course I picked a super complicated painting to try it on, so I know I'll be painting this one for a while. But you can see I just go back and forth, get all those details in. Now that all of my laces are in, still not all the details finished, I'll start putting some more of the detail of the ball and the leather in. So I'm going to add the laces holes, start adding that detail in. And again, when you're putting this amount of detail into a painting, and it's super photorealistic like this, you just have to have patience and it takes a while. If I'm not filming, I'm usually blasting some music in the background, taking some breaks so my hand doesn't get cramped up. But I'll put that dark in and then I'll come back with a lighter color. And add some of the detail of these holes that are, the laces go into. And then also, the baseball is super weathered. Where this goes in, there's a hump here. So it's important that I get that effect by putting some weathered areas on the baseball. When you first start putting them in, they look a little funny. But as I put more in, you'll start to see that it looks the right way. get some dirt on it, give it some contour, so we'll just keep going with that. When I put my big washes in, I knew that I would be lifting out a little bit of the color. When I'm planning a painting, I purposely think what my process is going to be in order to do the painting. And before I decide which colors to use, I have to know if I can use staining colors. Because if I know that my plan is to put in large washes and then lift small areas, obviously I don't want to plan main parts with staining colors. So when I'm doing that planning stage, I have to think what my process is going to be and decide if I'm going to lift. So I knew in this painting that I was going to have these big, big washes that went in and that later I was going to come back and lift out some of the highlights. I knew that I wasn't going to have to get it back to white paper, but just that I wanted to lift some small areas. So that is what I'm doing just with a simple wet brush. Going in and lifting some of the highlights that go in against the laces over here. I will still come back and put some darks over this other part to balance it out a little bit more. But when you're planning your painting in the beginning, 
it's important to think about which colors you're using and what you're going to need them to do later on. So you always want to keep that in mind right from the beginning. It makes a big difference. You don't want to get to the end and realize that you needed to lift some areas and all your colors are staining and then you can't get those highlights in that you need. I would much rather do it this way than use masking fluid. I really do not like masking fluid and I'll do just about anything I can to, to not use it on a painting. So on this painting I have already decided from the beginning that I wasn't using any masking on it at all just because I don't like it and that I would much rather lift out my highlights as a plan. So you can see the difference that's making. Obviously I'm going to add a lot more shadows and details like this along the bottom, but you can see what that lifting does makes that bottom pop already. Adding in some more of these details of the slice between the fabric or the leather of the baseball. Some of the details around the holes. Putting in these darker areas to give that shadowed effect and then I'm putting in some more details with the dirt that's around the seam to give more of the effect of that three-dimensional area right here And I'll be putting lots of different layers of slightly different colors. More of a dry brush technique to give it a little more texture. Because this is a group of very beat up baseballs. So I really want to have that impact of them all dirty and beaten up. A lot of it is just adding some detail and then stepping back and taking a good look at it to make sure that what you've added is where you need it to be but to start to get that ridge to look a little more realistic just lots of dry brush and you'll see it'll just keep going getting more and more detail but lots of layers letting it dry putting on another layer to really build up that look of the beaten up leather I don't have all of the finished details in on the laces but I'm putting in a couple of the markings on the baseball I really like painting old weathered stuff. While I'm painting I like to think about what happened to them and where they've been and things like that. And I love painting things that have stuff to do with my kids, so my kids are super into sports. Uh, my son is a crazy baseball fan, so it's kind of fun to paint a baseball. While we were at a baseball game last night, I was thinking about my baseball painting. So it's kind of fun to do stuff that has a connection to things in my life. I find I'm more invested in them while I'm doing them. Especially if it has something to do with my kids. But I'll go through and do this with lots of different layers. Just adding some detail, a lot of clay dirt, that red dirt marks up the baseball. So 
so you don't want to get too carried away, but you want it to look real. I'm just adding some different markings and things on the baseball. Once it keeps going, you'll see that in the end, it will look the right way. When you first start adding them, it's kind of like, oh no, what did I do? I just put a big mark on the ball. But you'll find that once you start adding more and get it all up to speed, it will look right. But before I totally finish this, I will bring up the rest of the painting and then come back and focus on the details before I do those final, final details. So for now, I'll leave this how it is, and then I can keep coming back to it as I work on more of the painting. Thank you so much for following along with my tutorial. I really hope you enjoyed it.